live together in the covenant of marriage. Will you love him and comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? Will you, the families of James and Rebecca, give your love and blessing to this new family? Will all of you, gathered here today by God's grace, uphold and care for James and Rebecca in their life together? Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to reveal your love to all people. Enrich James and Rebecca with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast which has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a partner fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called the living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the field, to every beast of the field, but for the man was not found a partner fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman, and brought her to the man. Then the man at last said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and cleaves to his wife, and they become one flesh word of the Lord. And a reading from the Gospel according to St. John. On the third day, there was a marriage at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus was also invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, O woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet. His mother said to the servants, do what he tells you. Now six stone jars of water were standing there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the steward of the feast. So they took it. And when the steward of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, he tended not know where it had come from, though the servants knew. The steward of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and when men have drunk freely, then the poor wine. You have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs which Jesus did in Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory and his disciples believed. The Gospel. I wonder if you have ever thought how odd a thing it is we do today. It seems like the most normal thing to do. Many of us have done this on one occasion or another. But I'd like you to think for a minute or two about how countercultural and strange it is the things we gather today to celebrate. We live in a world in which we throw things away, in which relationships are temporary, we come today with a hope and a trust and a prayer that this relationship will last forever. We live in a world in which we think we can make up our own stories as we go along. But in truth, we join our lives to a great story that began with a couple of characters we call Adam and Eve. And I need to be careful when I read this. My wife told me once that I preached for 32 minutes when this was the preaching. <laughs> but it's a marvelous story, and today, Rebecca and James joined their life 